doing scary thoughts. I'm in So let's do our sign language. Show me. Show me. Your. your ways. Me. Lord. Uh, teach. Teach. Me. Me. Your. Path. path. Psalm 25.4. Let's do it together. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Psalm 25.4. So let's do some worship, okay? We're going to do a song.
What is your guys' favorite thing to eat for lunch? Um, I like eating chicken fries. Chicken and fries? I like hot dogs and KD. Hot dogs, KD? I like eating hot dogs. KD hot dogs? No, hot dogs. Just hot dogs? Yeah. There's so many fun things that we get to eat for lunch. And. Oh, and the square things. The square things? And meat. Oh, Lunchables. Lunchables, yes. Lunchables are so yummy. Yeah, I love them. So we're doing a series on animals. Last week we saw the amazing power of God on display in the story of the frog. When an evil king refused, remember he went, mm, mm, mm. nope. Do you remember? Uh -huh. He kept refusing. He didn't want them to be free. He wanted to keep them, but God didn't give up. And he sent all the frogs and all the bugs and all the plagues to get his people free. Now they're free! And they're wandering in the wilderness. God didn't leave them even though they're free though, but they didn't have any food. If you were out in the forest, what would you eat? Nothing. Yeah, so they needed God to provide and he did. He did provide for them. So as they were traveling in an unknown territory and the food and the provisions they brought were starting to give out, guess what happened? The people got so hungry and they started to complain. They were like, oh, I'm hungry. Do you guys do that when you're hungry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you complain just like no, the people of God. No, and people don't want to get that food. Yeah, and God provided. So fortunately for them, God loved them enough to still provide for them. And he sent the next animal that we're learning about, quail. So let's read our story. Follow the cloud, Moses told the people. God led the Israelites through the wilderness in a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. They camped out at Elam, where there was plenty of water and trees. Then they set out again into the wilderness. Rumble, grumble, I'm getting hungry, aren't you? One person asked another. Yes, me too, that's for sure, the others answered. The Israelites should have remembered all the ways God had already taken care of them. They should have trusted him and asked him to give them food to eat. But they worried and complained instead. We wish we'd never left Egypt, they said. We had plenty to eat back there. Why did Moses bring us all the way out here anyway? God heard the people's growling tummies, and he heard their complaining, too. But he still loved them, and he gave them a new way to learn to trust him. Tonight, I will send quail for the people to eat, God told Moses. And in the morning, I will send bread from heaven. The people will gather it every morning. Moses told the people, God has heard you. Tonight, you will eat meat, and in the morning, you will have bread. That night, Quail flew into the camp for the people to catch and eat. The next day, early in the morning, the Israelites got up and looked outside their tents. What are those white flakes all over the ground? They asked in wonder. This is the food God promised you, Moses said. Each of you may gather as much as you can eat today, but don't save any because God will send more tomorrow. Let's go gather it up, the people said. Let's try some and see how it tastes. Mmm, that's good. It's like wafers made with honey. The people called the flakes manna. They could bake bread with it or make cereal. Every morning for five days, God sent new manna. Some people didn't listen to Moses, though. They saved some of the manna overnight and planned to eat it the next day. But in the morning, yuck, the manna we saved is full of worms, the people cried, and it smells horrible. Then, on the sixth day, God told the people to gather enough manna for two days because the next day, the seventh day, was the Sabbath which is a time for rest. There wouldn't be any new manna to gather on that day. When the Sabbath came, the manna the people had saved overnight was still fresh and fine to eat. No worms. It's not spoiled at all, the people said. For as long as the Israelites traveled and camped in the wilderness, before they entered the promised land, God sent them manna. He knew what the people needed, and he took care of them. That was a really cool story. God didn't forget his people. He sent manna raining down from the sky. Little wafer cookies raining down. And then he sent quails in the evening for them to eat. So God had not forgotten his people. He wanted them to ask. God wants us to ask for things that we need. He wants to so that he can provide and show us 
that he loves us. He sent flocks of quail into the camp for the people to capture and cook. And they have their own type of like chicken. The people were overjoyed. They had meat to eat, so they didn't just have to eat those wafer cookies called manna. They also sent strange food called manna. Manna was on the ground every morning, like the dew on the ground. And the people collected just enough for that day. In the middle of the wilderness, with no food in sight, God provided. And that's what he wants to do with us too. He will always provide our needs if we just pray and we ask him to provide. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you are good. Thank you that you provide for our needs and that you care about our prayers. Help us to be brave and to pray to you for all the things that we need so we can see how good you are and how much you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye. Bye.